Do it. If you're thinking about it, just get in your way and do it. Do it. Get on it. Do it. Just do it. Honestly, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. In the last six years, the sales of ukuleles has doubled to around 250,000. Originating in Hawaii, George Formby bought a four-stringed instrument to fame in the UK in the 30s and 40s with songs like When I'm Cleaning Windows and Leaning on a Lamp Post. In more recent years, however, bands like Mumford & Sons have helped the rise in sales of the ukulele. I travelled to Music Room in Portsmouth to find out more from someone who has noticed a rise firsthand. My name is uh, Alison Smythe, I'm the manager here at Music Room Portsmouth um, on Commercial Road. Um, we're a music store designed to get people into music, into instruments, uh, all varieties, all backgrounds, all ages, um, anyone that's interested in music. Um, we do all sorts from folk instruments, guitars, pianos, tech, recording technology, sheet music, um, all sorts. We just want people to come in and enjoy music. Why do you think the ukulele has had such an increase in popularity recently? Um, I think it's because it's a really um, easy instrument to pick up and play. I mean, if you already play string instruments, there's so many transferable skills. Or if you're interested in playing string instruments, if a lot of people have tried to play guitars and things and maybe given up or, or lost interest. But the ukulele is so um, compact and easy to get hold of and use that anything you learn on that, you can take elsewhere or any skills you already have make things much easier. But it's a very... Um, a very easy instrument to play with other people, to teach other people, so there's a real community around it as well. And uh, is that rise in popularity something you've noticed while you've been here? Yeah, definitely in the store, lots more people coming in asking for music, for accessories, for more expensive ukuleles to expand. Um, a lot of the guys that we work with, a lot of the reps for a lot of the music companies are bringing out whole new ranges, whole new woods, new experts in the field. Um, so there's a lot of demand for it, it's something that people are really interested in. All over the city there are different hubs and sources, um, different support groups, different learn to play groups, the, the uh, library offer free tuition for the instrument, there's loads of teachers around and about, um, and ukulele groups that meet up um, in pubs and, and whatnot all over the city to, again, um, just, just have a play, have fun, because there's such a, um, a community around it that people really want to get together and play from sort of traditional old, uh, old uh, British songs to, to modern classics and you know, everything from uh, ACDC and Metallica through to old 1920s, 30s, 40s hits. So yeah, there's, there's something for everyone. And what advice would you have for someone who's thinking of or has just started out playing ukulele? You should do it. Get on it. Do it. Uh, it's really fun, it's, it's really easy, much easier than it looks, and for such a tiny, chirpy instrument, you'll get a lot out of it. With the popularity still growing, both beginners and long-time players seem to be turning to YouTube tutorials to learn chords and songs. One of the most popular channels offering these lessons for free belongs to John Atkins, otherwise known as the ukulele teacher. I spoke to him to find out a bit about what he does. Hi, my name's John Atkins and I'm the ukulele teacher on YouTube. Basically, I started playing the ukulele as a joke. Uh, I've been playing the guitar most of my life since I was about 10 years old. And then uh, a couple of years ago, I had a job in an office and a friend of mine bought a ukulele and posted a little video of them playing it on YouTube. And I just thought it was really funny. So I bought a ukulele myself, taught myself how to play a couple of chords on it. And then as a joke to make fun of him, I uh, made a little video called sort of how to play the ukulele in 10 minutes and send it to him and uh, posted it on his Facebook page and on my Facebook page and kind of forgot about it and then I checked the video a few months later and loads of people had watched it, thousands of people had watched it so I thought I'd better learn how to play it properly and uh, started making a few more videos from that. So basically after having made that one video as a joke for my friend uh, I noticed on the bottom of the video loads of people had left comments sort of saying oh this is great can you teach us this song or can you teach us that song so I decided to make a few more videos, a few more lessons. At that time, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't have any experience editing or making videos. So they took me, you know, ages and ages to make. So I just started making one video a month if I had time. But then um, the subscribers and the views kept growing and growing. And so in the end, I decided to make them even more regularly. And uh, then it became sort of my full-time job a couple of years later. 
Um, I saw you recently met and worked with Mark Ronson and a few other people. What's the story behind that? Yeah, um, so basically I get emails all the time from all kinds of people. Some of them seem legit, some of them not so much. And I try and read and answer as many of them as I can, but often um, there's not much details or I don't really get the chance until maybe a week or two later to actually get back to people. But um, for some reason I read this email and it just said, hi, we're a group of people we're looking to make a documentary about people who post uh, covers of songs on YouTube and we saw your Uptown Funk video, would you be interested in helping us out? So there was, there was no details, no information uh, at all really apart from that. And, um, but for whatever reason it just sort of struck me as interesting so I said yeah I'm happy to help, uh, let me know what you want me to do. And basically two days later they called me in for an interview in their office in central London, then they sent a car around to my house, they put me up in a five-star hotel. So the next morning we were driven in a minibus to Abbey Road Studios and uh, told we had the studios to ourselves to record a new version of Uptown Funk and uh, we just sort of set up all our stuff, got into the studio, started jamming around and playing a little bit and uh, about 10-20 minutes later Mark Ronson walked through the door and said hi guys here's another surprise for you, I'm here to help you mix your cover and um, the day just kind of kept getting better and better and we didn't know anything that was going to happen at the beginning of the day and it just sort of got better and better all through the day so that's how, it, how we got into it. Um, last year I saw you went to the first ever U ukulele festival in Los Angeles um, what was that like and what kind of stuff happened? So the ukulele festival was uh, really crazy it was another one of those weird random right place right time sort of events for me um, back in, I think around September or October last year, I just was getting really stressed out at home and I thought, right, forget it, I'm going to go to America for six weeks, I don't care, you know, like now I make these videos, um, I don't really need to be at home and uh, I can sort of do them from anywhere, all I need is my camera, my laptop and uh, my ukulele of course. So uh, I've got a friend who lives in LA, so I just bought a plane ticket, flew out to him and said, hi, I'm staying with you for a couple of weeks, hope that's okay. Um, he was obviously at work, so I went to the beach. I posted a picture of myself on the beach and said, Hi guys, I'm in LA for a few weeks. Uh, and someone just left a comment on my Instagram picture that I posted by chance. And they said, Oh, you must be in town for the LA Ukulele Festival. Hopefully I'll see you there. And um, to be honest, that was the first I'd heard of it, but it actually happened to be the first weekend that I was in LA. So it was completely the case of right place, right time. Uh, but of course, as soon as I heard about it, I went along and it was uh, amazing. Um, I actually made a little blog or vlog video about it, uh, but basically there were loads of really, really excellent ukulele players from around the world, and in the middle of the uh, sort of school or the uh, area where it was being held, throughout the day there were loads of concerts, people performing. Um, in some of the classrooms there were little like um, demonstrations or classes for people to play ukuleles, and then all the way around the building there were all kinds of tables uh, of people selling ukulele t-shirts and souvenirs and uh, ukuleles as well. So it was just a really nice sort of gathering of ukulele lovers. And um, it was particularly cool for me because even though I didn't know anyone there, uh, I actually got recognised a couple of times, which was really exciting for me. Um, have you noticed a rise in the popularity of the ukulele while you've had your channel? Yeah, I've totally noticed the rise of uh, popularity of the ukulele since I've been doing this channel. Uh, when I made my first video, I only knew one guy who had a ukulele, and that was my friend at work. And uh, then it seemed within, I don't know, six months or a year of sort of making these videos, um, it seemed like everyone had one. Uh, now I know, honestly, I think pretty much everyone I know either has a ukulele or has a friend who plays the ukulele or has someone in their family who plays the ukulele. Uh, they've started teach in England at least they've started teaching it at primary schools instead of the recorder so young kids are growing up learning the ukulele um, I was just randomly looking for people to play the ukulele with a couple of years ago and I just typed in ukulele players Hammersmith because that's where I was living at the time and there turned out to be a ukulele society or a ukulele club that met every Monday at the pub at the end of my road the road I was living in five minutes from my house so yeah, within about a year of me playing that ukulele, making that ukulele video for a joke, it just suddenly seemed to explode and uh, everyone seemed to be doing it. And in fact, by the time I left my job a couple of years later, people in my office that I didn't even know were coming up to me saying, oh, I play the ukulele, I was watching your video, can you help me or can you 
advise me on this. Um, so yeah, it just seems it's gone from being one of those kind of weird, quirky things that no one did to just something cool that loads and loads of people do. And last of all, what advice would you have for someone who's just starting out or is thinking about starting playing the ukulele? Uh, well, I guess two pieces of advice. Firstly, do it. If you're thinking about it, just get a ukulele and do it because it's so much fun. Um, there's so many great things about it. You don't really need any kind of musical background, but it's a good way of learning basic musical background. So it's a really sort of cool thing to play. It's really good fun. It's really sociable. Like I said, I've met a lot of people through doing it. and I've made a lot of friends. And um, it's very relaxing and enjoyable as well. So my first piece of advice, if you're thinking about doing it, is just do it. Honestly, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And uh, my second piece of advice, if you're thinking about doing it, is take it slow. Don't just sort of jump in and think, I'm going to be the greatest ukulele player in the world. Uh, and, and then you'll get sort of frustrated and fed up when it's a bit tougher than you think. It, you can learn the basics very quickly and very easily, but it's really tempting when you've learned one or two chords to just rush into it and then, you know, you sort of get stuck. So just take it slow, you know, learn those chords, um, learn the right sort of strumming technique and uh, just have fun with it, you know, so go for it.